Hello and welcome to a new episode of Mole in Space. My name is Kaz Mole and today in the Starfleet podcast we are talking finally about the main story and then about a few other side stories and bigger stories in the game itself. So if you're somebody who hasn't finished the main story yet, which you probably had ample time to, uh, you don't want to listen to this because this is spoiler territory. But for everyone who has now finished the main story, you can stay around. And then we will also talk about a little bit on some of the other bigger stories. But I will not go into super nitty gritty detail of everything. So if you have like a main story, or not main story, like a like a bigger story you haven't finished yet, you don't have to be afraid that I'm telling you too much. With that said, let's talk about the main story in Starfield. And... Man, can I just say that this was probably the best story Bethesda has ever created? Like, seriously. I have played Bethesda games since Morrowind, and there were some okay ones, but there were also some really bad ones. Like, I think the the worst one is Fallout 4, still in my opinion. That story had so many holds, and was just like, what? Are you... Are you for real? Wait, this is the story? And they explained it all with like basically an oversight at the beginning of the game, right? And I, I never liked that. I, I felt like it was so like they they didn't put a lot of effort into it. Like the whole premise started out really great in Fallout 4. And then the longer you were just playing, the more you're realizing, wait a minute. Oh no. Oh, no. And they also, well, they try to create four endings, right? For, like, different main stories and different different characters. They had basically lined up to explain the story to you. Um, I finished the game with, what was it? Um, with the, um, ah, what are they called? <laughs> Damn it. I'm blanking right now. I want to say Steel Legion, but that is not correct. Um, Legion of Steel? Right? How am I blanking on that group right now? Wow, that's embarrassing. It, it, doesn't, want, it doesn't want to click. Um, Brotherhood of Steel. There we go. My God. As, as you can see, I am like really in depth in the Fallout universe. No, I actually know the Fallout universe pretty well. <laughs> I don't know why my brain just stopped working there for a second, like complete brain fart. Um, no, Brotherhood of Steel, I used that ending. I mean, it was a fun ending, but it was also like, okay, and that's it now? Mm, right. So I was actually really happy when they tried something new here. They, the whole idea fell a little bit apart at the end when they revealed that they're basically jumping through different universes, right? And like the people which were your enemies were just people from the other universe. And okay, it's clear that there is another Starfield coming at some point because the story the story ends with this you, you remember when you were going out there and you were trying to understand where the artifacts are coming from and what's the exact deal of the artifacts they never really answered that yes you had a conversation at the end of the game with basically the center of the universe aka the artifact and that's all cool but you, you never really got the answer on who made them, where did they come from, and why is everyone doing it? Like, that is also something I completely... Maybe, maybe I have just missed that information, but I have completely failed to understand why they are doing this. Right? Like, yeah, th there, there was this one character who was like, yeah, I jumped already, like, hundred times or two hundred times through other universes. I was like, okay, but for what? I never I never fully understood that. And that was unfortunately something I missed out on. But 
it didn't it didn't became clear to me. And again, like the whole premise they're kind of trying to build with the beginning of the story just didn't work out. <laughs> they they never came back to it, which I found very unfortunate. But nonetheless, I still think they did a pretty good job also to explain the new game plus. Um, I I find that a bit like I find it unfortunate that New Game Plus was basically spoiled by all those magazines, and this is why I I'm, I'm hating more and more like this whole oh yeah magazines can basically talk about the game two weeks before it comes out and can already prepare guides so the moment the embargo is falling, um, they can like post ominous things or full on blown um leaks or not leaks sorry um spoilers that was wrong word i don't know what's going on today and it's like man dude i knew about new game plus the moment i started to play this game and the problem is that then the magazines are trying to play each other by putting less and less ominous headlines out there. Like the first headlines are like, there's a new game plus in Starfield. Or, hey, you want to know how a new game plus works? But beware, big spoilers. Something like that, right? They're trying to not give you a lot of information. And then they are starting more and more with how to get to the center of the universe to get to new game plus. Like how to finish the artifact to activate new game plus and or, or jump through the galaxy. Like they I, I saw some headlines where I basically knew how new game plus was triggered, even with me not wanting to know about it. And that was so annoying. Like I hate that. I hate that so much. I know it's all the clickbait machine nowadays, and I'm really really annoyed by all the clickbait bullshit i'm like even i have to admit that i sometimes have to use like some slight clickbait on my on my titles and whatnot because well you want to get views any other way <laughs> good luck you know like you're not you're not getting that most of the time and it is rather annoying you know but i'm sorry there was, there was a rant going in a completely different direction. Let's talk about more about the main story. I really like the idea. Uh, I decided to go with the I trust none of you option. And I'm actually really glad that Bethesda gave me that option. Like, I didn't like any of the two characters. I didn't like the hunter. He was a dick, right? He was just like the ruthless guy who doesn't care anymore. And then there was the, um, what was it, the Guardian? I think she was the Guardian, right? Or, well, depending on who you were meeting there. Um, the person was the Guardian, right? And the Guardian was like the... She was like the good person, but she also wanted regulations and all that. And I was like, hey, wait a minute. You give me the chance to just do my own thing? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So... Which leads me to a very interesting ending. There was the ending where you meet both of them in in that last like last relic position thingy. And you can end this without a fight. You can literally just talk them down. I failed that. The first time. I say the first time. No, I didn't save scum. I don't I normally don't do save scums. So I had to fight and then I failed, right? And they killed me because damn that fight was was harsh. Um so I tried it again. <laughs> I tried it again because that's where the game loaded me in. And I managed and they were literally like, Yeah, you're right. Oh yeah, yeah, you were right. Mm. Yeah, let's not fight here. It's useless. I was like, wait, what? Oh, okay, cool. Um, I think I finished the game. <laughs> so that was the thing. Um, 
Oh yeah, can I? Okay, the one thing I really hated about the main story, and I have to put that out there, like I hated it, was the whole fighting against the ships, where they forced you to fight the starborn ships. I'm like, dude, my ship is not great. It's not as I put some work into it, but it wasn't great. And I had zero skills in ship combat. What are we doing here? Why is this forced on me now by the end of the game? Where I'm like, I, I get it. If you would have done it at the beginning, right, it would have been more fair. But the whole game, you're kind of insisting that you can always stop the fighting. You can always get away from the ship fighting. Like, even if you're getting attacked by pirates, right, you can still, like, graph jump somewhere else. If you so desire. But this one, no. You had to do it. You had to win it. And it was a main story thing. And I was so not on board with that. Like I was actually really, really unhappy with that decision. And I don't know why they put it there. It, it was literally one of the frustrating moments. And I can only imagine, I saw some streamers who, where I already knew that the whole ship fighting is coming up. And I saw some streamers going, well, shipbuilding, ship fighting, I don't care. I would don't give a damn about this. And I was like, well, I wish you good luck because you are pushing the main story right now. And in about three missions, you will get fluffed. So that was that was really unfortunate that they put that in there and i i don't know why i really don't understand why it makes no sense right but i i still believe even with all the small things i still believe it was the main story with the best story Bethesda had it was cohesive it made sense you followed it through from the beginning to the end. And at the end, you were not sitting there and go, what was that? Right? It all made kind of sense. Now, of course, I am curious how they explain Starfield 2 then in 10 years or so. <laughs> oh, God. Um, no, like, actually, it makes it pretty easy to explain the Starfield uh, DLCs which are coming, like they have already announced uh, the next story DLC might even come out by the end of the year, uh, the very first one. And it's pretty easy to explain it, right? Like whenever you are like, oh, how can this be in this like universe out of nowhere? And it's like, well, it's it's another universe. You know, you jump, you jump through into another reality and things change there. Things that go different there. It's, it's a great way for not having to explain why you did something drastically different, right? Because you can just like, oh my God, the faces sometimes. <laughs> you can just blame it on this universe jumping. And I think they did a pretty good job on that. Speaking of which, let's talk a little bit about the other main stories. I call the main stories because they are quite lengthy and they are sometimes some big decisions you have to make. Like the first one I played was UC Vanguard and man, that thing was long, but it wasn't what I expected. So I joined the UC Vanguard because my plan was to just do ship combat. And I, I, I thought that the main mission would be all about ship combat. Right? That they are sending you around and be like, yeah, hunt down the pirates, do your job, protect the galaxy. Because I wanted to go into ship combat a little bit more. And then you find out, nope, no ship combat whatsoever. Um, you, you, are, you are doing something completely different. Right? <laughs> I, found that, I found that really interesting. So that was a complete misunderstanding of mine. Um, I have to admit 
the Vanguard is definitely the one I expected something completely different. Not just the ship combat, but also like the story itself. Like when they are selling the Vanguard to you, it's like, yeah, you are out there trying to protect the UC and get your UC citizenship at the end of it, right? Like I was kind of thinking they're sending you on like smaller missions and do small things with you. And then at some point you are getting your, your UC membership. But instead it blows up to this big like conspiracy thing um, with like secrets of the past coming to light and you get your UC citizenship after like, what is it, five missions or so? <laughs> and it's like, oh, 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 okay, UC citizenship, yay, I can buy something in here, woo! <laughs> right? It's like, okay, not what I expected, but it's still fun. I think it was still like a very fun mission and the decisions you could make in the end. Right, I really, really like that. But the best mission, and funny enough, we will have a video about that by the end of the week. But the best mission I have played so far is the Pirates, the Crimson Fleet. If you haven't done it, do the Crimson Fleet mission. Again, I will have a video up which which I will uh, explain how to join the Crimson Fleet, what you can do there, what are the repercussions. Um, TLDR, if you're just following the main story with the Crimson Fleet, there are no repercussions. You can just do it. Uh, if you are, of course, a psycho, like I am, and you do it more than just the main mission, then you will end up with some hefty bounty. In fact, let me show you this super quickly for everyone who is watching the video. Um, I paid my bounty for the UC, so I could actually go back to Alpha Centauri. But if I want to go to Cheney, you can see it right here. I'm scratching the 100k mark <laughs> on Cheney. And um, not Cheney, Cheney. <laughs> And the Freestar Collective is not welcoming me with open arms anymore. It's a it's a bit of a pickle. <laughs> but again, as long as you are just sticking with the story of the Crimson Fleet, you're all good. You're all good. No need to worry. Right. And it's really good. It's like they, they basically had the idea to take one piece or a lot of like pirate stories. Right. Put this into a sci-fi um, sci environment. But they also put in some James Bond moment. Because you are a double agent. Right? Like, it's, it's pretty easy. You are finding that out right at the beginning. Um, that's the reason why you were joining the Crimson Fleet in the per first place. Right? You were a double agent. And you're j then joining them under the pretense of wanting to become part of the Crimson Fleet. Even though in reality... You were just, you know, there to gather some hints and some evidence and all that. But nonetheless, the story is pretty great and you have so many decisions. That mission in particular is just great because it gives you so many decisions you can make. And also you can make a lot of decisions of screwing up people it's amazing how i'm like halfway through through the crimson fleet and i already had the choice of killing off like three or four people if i wanted to through my decision making it's it's cool like definitely one of the most make some decisions which actually matter kind of mission deal right and highly recommend that Highly recommend the Crimson Fleet. Yep, again, no repercussions. You don't have to fear that. Um, what I find interesting, the side stories have been all right. I think the side stories have been have been all right so far. Uh, there was nothing. There wasn't there wasn't a single side story where I was going like ooh ooh like it's it's kind of weird but I 
I don't really remember any particular side stories. And I've been playing some. Like, I have some in my head, which I remember now. But I'm, I'm going through those side stories again. And my only thought is, ha, huh, fetch quest. They're mostly fetch quests. Literally, like, bring the people from A to B, collect something, kill somebody. Like, it's, it's a typical MMO fetch quest they had in the side story, which I found a bit, well, boring. But, eh. Oh, yeah, one last thing. One last thing I wanted to say about the main story before I forget. I'm sorry, I finished the main story three weeks ago. Um, so, for me, it's like, I, I forget, like, one or two parts here. But the one thing I do not like about the main story also was the last big mission before the end fight. The whole uh, station thing. Right? With the with the back and forth going. It was too long. There was... There was definitely a mission which they stretched out unnecessarily. They they could have just done it like a 20-minute mission and everyone would have been like, wow, that was really cool. I like that. No, they stretched it out to over an hour or an hour and a half. That's how long I took because I also am a dingus and the whole jumping back and forth was like a little bit complicated to say the least. But after 20 minutes, everyone would have understood what they are trying to, what the point is they are trying to make with this mission, which was there are other universes out there, right? And you you will have the ability to basically jump back and forth in that universe, right? And that's, I get it. Right, but after 20 minutes, that was clear to everyone. I was like, yeah, okay, okay. And then they stretched it out. I like the I like the decision. They they made you I had to go with basically the evil decision, so to speak. I decided that the dude who was actually calling you in, right, like the the scientist was actually the guy who was in your universe and he was calling you in and I decided that he shouldn't exist. That was like, oof. You know. <laughs> that was that was a tough decision. But it's like, yeah, man, I could save hundreds of people against one dude and he wouldn't even notice. Okay. <laughs> Right? Like it's not like that he was in pain or anything. He was just like the the whole the whole part of his universe just snapped out of existence. Like nothing happened there. Um But it's just yeah, I, I did the the other option. But man, I really liked the Starfield story. And I was also kind of happy not to do it again. <laughs> I'm kind of happy that I'm I'm beyond the point now, and that you can just decide to say, okay, you know what, I don't I don't want to do it again. I just want to skip that story. And I'm like, oh, thank God, yes, please. Like it wasn't it wasn't bad. Like as I said, I think this is the best Bethesda story Bethesda has ever created. But I also don't feel the need of doing it again. Mm -hmm. Yep. But with that said, I would say we are done here with the whole story talk. And I will be back next week. I will probably talk a little bit more about... Well, I want to talk a little bit about mods because they become more and more important and we have already reached a point where there are tons of mods available in Starfield. 
even though the official mod tools are not even out yet, which is uh, crazy, right? And then I also want to talk a little bit more about builds and equipment. Yeah, because I don't want to spoil it too much right now. So if I'm starting to get into it right now, then we are sitting here for another 30 minutes just talking about that topic, which, again, I want to do next week. But let's just say the, the higher you're getting in level, the more you are realizing a few things regarding inventory, regarding the, the items you have, and also the builds you are running, right? So that's what I want to talk about next week, plus modding. Because, damn, is there a lot of mods. Mm -hmm. With that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like if you have. And also, if you're new to the channel, you want to see more Starfield content plus the weekly podcast, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. And I hope I see you next time. And don't forget, this week we have also a Crimson Fleet video coming up where I'm going into more detail on how this all works. With that said, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.